You're watching MEAC Basketball on ESPN+. Plus. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside McDougal McClendon Arena here on the campus of North Carolina Central University. Seconds away from tip between NC Central and Florida A&M. Alongside Stan Luter, I'm Ryan Craig. Second game between these two teams in as many nights, and what a tale of two halves it was a night ago. Stan Central by 10 after the first half. Florida A&M plus 17 in half number two. I know you've got your eyes on a pair of guys here tonight. Well, one of the reasons there was a plus 17 for the Rattlers was because of this guy, Brian Mar Bryce Morang. Now, what he did was he was just athletic. Loose balls, active, gets to play, finishes inside, steps out inside there, spin, turn, makes the jump shot. He's the guy that ended the ball game with 12 points and 10 rebounds, his second double-double of the season. Very, very active. Can he do the same thing tonight? Be interesting to see. He played 39 minutes last night. What does he have in the tank left for the Florida a &M Rattlers? Now, on the other side, you got a guy in Bryce Perkins. He's a senior. He's going to go down in the record books as one of the best assist men in the, in the, in the whole conference, in the MEAC and also North Carolina Central. 525 and counting. A leader, a very physical guard, doesn't shoot the ball from the perimeter much. He drives and scores and gets other guys involved. Perkins and Bryce Morang. Let's keep eye on these two guys. Just about to tip it off here. DJ Jones against Justin Watley. Same lineups for both teams. Spear, Reeves, Randolph, Moraine, and Jones for head coach Robert McCollum in his fourth season on the sidelines for the Rattlers. Lavelle Moten, a dozen years now at his alma mater. Goes with Perkins, who you just mentioned. Watley, who I mentioned a second ago. Justin Wright, Jonathan Maxwell, and Nicholas Fennell. It was Fennell with the hot start a night ago. A 5-0 run for him personally as the Eagles really came out on fire, put a bunch of pressure on Florida A&M, caused a whole lot of turnovers. And as usual with, with the North Carolina Central Eagles, they come out in man-to-man -man and, again, very aggressive that first five or six minutes of the game last night, got off to the big lead, just not able to sustain it in the second half. And we'll just see what adjustments they're going to make. They're going to give you the weave. They're going to give you the motion. They're going to look for drives and cuts. And, again, Florida A&M and, and Central have played three times this year. Florida A&M's won all three. Rattlers broke a six-game losing streak here in Durham with that win a night ago. It was the first time that the home team had won in nine games. Excuse me, that the road team had won in nine games. The home team had won the last eight in the series. Fennell short on the jump shot, rebounded by Reeves. And those 58 points that Central scored last night was the most they'd scored in those three battles this year. So, again, Florida a has done a really nice job of defending them. And in most cases, especially in the second half of these ball games, allowing them only one shot. Rebounding played a big part of last night's game. 45-32, the margin in favor of Florida A&M. Five on the shot clock. Jones, who battled some foul trouble yesterday, kicks it out. Reeves hits the three. Reeves did a nice job a night ago of spotting up and being able to knock down some threes. One of the better three-point shooters for Florida A&M gets them on the board. He had three of them a night ago, 13 points in total. Tied for the team high along with MJ Randolph. Inside working hard for two is Maxwell. Nice job by Maxwell just to power it up and go inside and score. Here's MJ Rudolph into the paint and he travels. You remember last night, second half of the ball game, we talked about the fact that, you know, Randolph is not a big scorer all the time, but Randolph comes in the second half. It's in the inside lane to score. They tried to cut that out off tonight. Got him caught with the char with the travel. Last night we profiled Randolph and Kaiser in the open of the show. Both of them struggled from the field, but Randolph found a way to have an impact in other ways. Nine rebounds, three assists, a couple of steals for him in a winning effort for Florida A&M. And that's a good word, impact. He had an impact in the second half. His hands were around the basketball. He was getting rebounds, making some passes, and just, just an overall floor leader. Justin Wright will take it out of bounds for North Carolina Central. MEAC Rookie of the Week in early February this year. Here is Wright. Picks up his dribble. Less than 10 to go on the shot clock. Step back jump shot. 
Rebounded by Spear. Another turnover. This was the story for the Rattlers a night ago. 13 of their 18 turnovers took place in the first half, but it's given right back as Wright steps on the sideline. I, you know, I kind of expected this to be kind of a staggery, rumble-tumble basketball game. These guys left it on the court last night. It was such a physical game. I think it's going to take them a little while to kind of get the motor running. But the thing of it is, you don't want to let that happen too late. I right, make some plays. There you go. DJ Jones spent a lot of time on the bench in the second half yesterday with four fouls with quite a bit of time to go. Leads the conference in field goal percentage coming into this two-game set. Nice job on that press breaker. Jones saw a three-game streak of double-figure points come to an end. He grabs the rebound there. He had eight last night. Probably would have been in double figures if not for having to sit out all that time. High off the glass. Nice finish there for Spear. Much better spar tonight for the Rattlers than last night. And a guy that we really didn't talk a lot about having an impact on the game is the freshman, Mr. Jalen Spear. Among freshmen, second leading scorer in the conference. Maxwell inside draws the hard foul from Jones. We saw this a lot last night, too. There were a number of guys slow to get up, physical game. He got through some blood there. They may look at this and call this a flagrant one because it was above the above the shoulders. We'll take a look at this. And you saw Jones grab his elbow. The elbow of Jones catching Maxwell. Patient, just came down. I mean, I, I, it was a basket, as crazy as this may sound, it was a basketball play. Yep. But they may look at that because of where the contact occurs. Yep, I agree, I agree with you. For now, we'll take a short break. Florida A&M is 7-2 lead here in Durham. You next. Seven two lead as the officials are taking a look at the replay. You're seeing right now what they are seeing on this play that I agree with you, Stan, was a basketball play. Normally when you talk flagrant, you're saying this yeah, see, is something see, that was above and beyond. He's really coming part of down it. and his elbow, because he's in the air, doesn't have anywhere to go. So his elbow and his and their head meet. I mean that you it's who among us <laughs> has never taken that blow? Nice head and shoulder fake, gets the defender off his feet, and then he just comes down. So the referee rules it. They did. Exactly what you're talking about, Stan. And that is that it's a basketball play. In fact, those were the exact words of the official. So a 7-2 lead, and Kaiser will come on and shoot free throws as Maxwell had to be tended to off the court don't know if that's going to require stitches or not but for now kaiser comes on off the bench just like he did last night transfer from wichita state preseason all miak first team maybe this will kind of jump start north carolina central right now not playing with the emotion that you're accustomed to seeing with them and you know missed the two free throws there and Florida a &M not you know not really doing a bad job of shooting the basketball efficiently three out of four and they're just kind of taking care of business that's a good press breaker Evans the seer on for the first time in Florida A&M a much much better start than a night ago a 10-2 lead here at the under 16. Nice job by the seer gets inside the paint and I told you anytime the ball gets in the paint you can kick it out good things can happen knock down three. Palmer down low to Watley and he travels. Take a look right now. Ball press breaker goes inside. Desir doesn't force it. Three white shirts around the basketball. It's really hard for Kaiser to come in and try to close out. And he's just too much room for him to cover. Clark buries a three. One for six from the field for the Eagles to start. Rattlers four of five. Looking for Randolph. Forced to chase that one down. He and Kaiser marked each other quite a bit last night. 
Another three. Another make. You know, most of the time when the clock is winding down under five or six, you say drive it, try to create something. They're very, very patient tonight, very confident moving the ball. Remember when we talked last night about how much ball movement you were seeing out of them in the second half, and you get a shot with the clock down. We talked about last night being a tale of two halves. How about a tale of two games? What a turnaround for Florida A&M from less than 24 hours ago. As Palmer hits the jumper. Try to get you caught on the switch. That's the first shot and the first make for Randolph. If you've not seen MJ Randolph, averages about 15 and a half points a ball game. Does not take a lot of three point shots, only five on the season. Scores most of his points at the free throw line and in the paint. Kaiser misses everything on that one, but it'll stay with NC Central as Reeves returns. Kaiser, 0 for 1 from the field. Scored 11 points last night, but needed 16 shots to do it. Jameer Williams checks in. Battled injuries quite a bit a year ago. Spinell will also come on in place of Cabea. Kaiser nearly didn't reestablish himself in bounds. Melvin to an open shooter. It's Palmer for three off the mark. And the cold shooting continues for NC Central. Four of three from three point line. Remember we talked about that's a steal. Palmer misses on the dunk. Oh. Well, it's been that kind of night for the Eagles thus far. Back the other way. It's turned over by Randolph. You know, you. <laughs> You ask him to get in the passing lane. You look for an explosion play. And, and you know, there are times when you'd fault the guy for missing the dunk, you know, but you, he, he's just trying to make a play and just rims out. Sometimes it happens. Never happened to me because I never, <laughs> never got high enough. Might have happened to you at some point. Sometimes, probably. sometimes it happens. Staggered <laughs> screen up high. Here we go. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> But you understand. Absolutely. I've seen it happen from below. Finnell lines up the three. That one's good. First one of the night for NC Central. Nice job that time of reversing the ball and reversing again and finding Finnell open the lefty from the wing. Reeves double teamed. Williams with Kaiser on him. Tries to use the glass, and Kaiser comes away with it. He led the Eagles with half a dozen rebounds last night. Now into the paint. And the Eagles have something going here in the last few minutes. Nice job in transition for Kaiser to get that close to the paint. Just make the layup. I mean, if you play defense, you can get some easy shots on the other side. 15 9. Lefty three off the mark. Moraine with the rebound, has it punched away. And now Palmer comes away with it. Extra pass from Kaiser. Good job by Florida a &M to get back in transition D. Williams guarding Kaiser. Five on the shot clock. Finnell tries the three from the wing, and Moraine comes away with the rebound. That was an absolutely fantastic defensive set. Stopped the transition, stopped the ball in the middle of the floor, got a guy who wants to put it to the floor, make a play, made him uncomfortable the entire time. Clark off the mark. 15-9, Rattlers have the lead, but it's a 5-0 run for NC Central here on their home floor. Looking for win number five of the season and number one against Florida A&M. 
until next time. The lead is six for the Rattlers, but a 5-0 run for NC Central. As they try to bust out of this shooting slump, they were five of 27 from three last night. Stan, just one of five here tonight. That three ball is not falling for Lavelle Moten's and, team. And the same thing about it was they had some really good looks. I mean, it's not like every shot was a last second, let me throw it up and hope it hope beg for something. They were getting good looks, shots were not falling. Tribute some of that to Florida a &M's defense, but you know, they just got to keep firing them up And I think when they fall they're gonna fall a lot And right now for your central you just got to continue to play smart basketball in the show zone after the timeout Reeves misses on the three Melvin quickly the other way Funny thing about central shooting threes are best in the conference by by percentage There you go Ty Graves Transfer from St. Louis hits that one. And we're back to a three-point game. Local guy out of Greensboro. I haven't really seen a lot of him as of late. Playing on the home floor for the last time. He, along with, there's another turnover. He, along with Perkins, you know that they want to come out and play well. It was a good look for him. Despite the lead, that's half a dozen turnovers now for Florida A&M as we take another look at the three from Graves. And you see Graves in rhythm. Knocking down his 6-3 of the season again. He's a guy that kind of comes in and steadies the ship They don't ask him to score the basketball a lot But be a very solid ball handler a good defender and, and kind of lead this team He's one of those staggered swings from way away. And they'll start all the action You've got to be able to defend both sides of the floor Offensive foul is called looked like it was Cabea that may have gotten whistled for the illegal screen Team Ryan, this is the thing that that kind of hurts your shooting too is that you lose your rhythm you're trying to run a play boom there's a foul you try to run a play and you have a turnover and you can't really get everything in sync and central has really struggled sometime at not being able to score or value the ball at, at, at opportune time oh. wide open underneath was to seer and the foul Everybody kind of held their breath right then. Desir got low. Big guy, 300 plus pounds, goes inside and finishes, gets the possible three point play, but took up a lot of space. And some way, somehow, on the defensive side, they lost track of the big fella. Two quick fouls on Cabea. As Desir heads to the line, where he is 17 of 24 on the season coming into tonight. I like him. He, he, he's a physical guy, obviously. He's got a nice touch, really good footwork. Second time he came up short shooting. Last night, I remember he had a little yeah, 12 foot jumper and he shot at 11 feet. <laughs> Cabea stays on with the two fouls. Here he is with the ball now. Kaiser, plenty of time for that three. As the seer cleans the glass. Off and running with Spear. Pull up jump shot in the paint. Cabea. Looks like he may have injured his ankle or knee on the play. Didn't even cross half court. The finish by Melvin. Well, he's been wearing a knee brace all season, and I think that's that right knee. Fort Anium's not wrecking that. Now, they, now the officials have stopped the game. Nine twenty-seven on the clock. 17-14 the scores. You can see Cabea really in a lot of pain shot goes off and you can see he just kind of steps wrong and then off we go and you take it in transition that's Moultrie does a really nice job of reading the defense McLean I should say just takes it down the length of the floor and, and scores but now see you get the basket see there's a rhythm you get the basket you stop him you miss a play then you have the injury and it just kind of throws you off just a little bit that doesn't look good no it does not it's Cabea having trouble putting any weight on that leg in comes Cameron Bowles to replace him. Bay had started some games earlier this season and you know, again was not not that big score for them. Transfer from a couple places, Southwest Idaho most recent, but had given them a lot of, uh, uh, of physical play. And you certainly don't want to see another guy go down, especially right this part of the season. Two players for the Central Eagles down. Bowles comes on for Cabea, very different body type, and Desir has his way inside. Back-to-back -back baskets 
for the senior from Haiti. Great inside position. Not much that Melvin could do on that play. Kaiser comes off the screen. Finnell down low to see her cuts him off. Under 10 on the shot clock. Step back three for Kaiser is good. You know, every time Kaiser gets the ball in the wing, he puts it to the floor. Now, that's his rhythm mechanism to get the shot off. He's got to go between the legs and make a little bounce. And I think he's going to have some success if he begins to be a more consistent catch and shoot guy. He scored that time, but just something to think about. You take him off that shot. Jones finishes inside. The Rattlers having their way on the interior. Well, they definitely have a size advantage against North Carolina Central, especially when you put Sear in there and also Jones. So you just kind of work those two guys inside, let them do, th do their thing. Both teams finding a bit of a rhythm offensively now. Each have made three of their last four, make it four of five for the Eagles. Nice drive by Ty Grave. Randolph, a long two. Melvin on the move once again. Kicks it to Graves for three. Good look. Looking for Nasir inside. NC Central just has no answer for him right now. And he'll shoot another couple free throws when we come back. 7.37 on the clock. Rattlers by two, looking to extend the lead here on ESPN+. Plus. Scoreless in nine minutes last night. Evans DeSeer already a couple of buckets early, and he'll return to the free throw line, having an impact. And what's been a different kind of game here tonight? Well, he's been active tonight, too, in, in the block, and it's more of a half court game so far. But Florida AM being a, in the lead as opposed to last night when they were trailing so much in the first half, having to come back. So you can use him. Low block player. He passes the ball well. And watch this. Nice little pass in the post. Gets low block position and the footwork. Boom. Starts on one side of the rim, takes it to the other side, and gets the contact. And he shoots 70% from the free throw line, but not successful in the second. But again, you play to Sear. You use him as an outlet. You let him rebound and bang guys, and he gives you some production. One possession game. Under seven and a half to go in the first half. Kaiser. Draws the foul on Reeves. Only the second team foul on Florida A&M. NC Central with four. Relatively clean game here in the first half. And, and, and you think about, and I hate to keep talking about last night, last night, last night, but that's our point of, point of view and point of perspective. Last night was such a physical basketball game. You know, I mean, we've seen some guys go down tonight, but it's a, it's a different type of game, I think. I would agree with you. Lining up the footwork, lining up the three, and missing that time was Clark. He had hit his first two. Now he's missed his last two. Stopping on a dime, Melvin, fall away jumper. Nice job by Mike Melvin. I mean, he adds that little dimension of being a quick guard that can handle the basketball. And you don't forget about Caldwell they brought in last night. So you feel real good about the perimeter game for Central. The problem is that they're not that very big sometimes. They get posted. Timeout called by Cameron Reeves as Graves applied the defense. We'll take a quick break here. And McDougal McClendon Arena, the home team, trails by one here on ESPN+. Plus. Of entertainment, Paramount Plus. It's so good. 
Returning to the floor, Jonathan Maxwell, no longer 23, 32 instead, so he got patched up off the court after taking the elbow unintentionally from DJ Jones, looked at by the officials, ruled a basketball play, and so just a common foul. Good to see him back there on the floor. And then grabbing the rebound, a foul is called though. You, you wonder also with Florida a and uh, is there a little fatigue? And, and I'm sure it's going to be for both teams. It's obvious you're playing back to backs as hard as they play. But if you notice a lot of their shots are falling just a little short. Everything's hitting front rim. Everything's hitting front rim. And, and that, that's usually a sign that you're not able to get your shot, you know, get your shot off getting into your legs. The minutes distribution for these two teams that's very better. different a night ago, although Clark looking strong here this evening already his third three. NC Central didn't have anybody play more than 29 minutes last night. Spear, Moraine, and Randolph all played more than 29. Reeves went 29 on the dot as Kaiser finishes. And they've got for the NM, three guys, the guys that you just mentioned, Randolph, Spear, and Moraine, that average over 32 minutes of ball games. So they play in a lot of minutes, a lot of heavy minutes. And, you know, that's, that can be good or it can be bad sometimes. And, you know. It's a nice look for Randolph. Jones will shoot free throws. You mentioned in the open, 39 minutes for Moraine. Randolph barely came off the floor either. He played 38. Yeah. Well, pick and roll action. Here's the play a moment ago, the back cut. Again, both of these teams do a really nice job of, of starting their offense, you know, 18, 20 feet away from the basket a lot of times, and then just running cutters, getting screens, getting you to be ball mesmerized. In other words, you're watching the ball, and you're not you're forgetting about where the cutter is, and you get back doors, and, and it frees up jump shooters. And so if both teams are able to run their offense and make your free throws, you know, it, it, it can pose for a very solid basketball game. Kaiser and one. And one. Absolutely. Much more efficient evening for Kaiser, who now has nine on four of seven from the field. Just a nice job getting the ball off the glass and then pushing it down the floor. Melvin doesn't waste any time. You want to see what a high-flying eagle looks like? There it is! Mr. Kaiser with the layup and the possible three-point play. I like that. Push it down the floor, get you some easy baskets, and that allows you to set your defense. Melvin only has one gear. Boom! <laughs> he is a blur when he gets his hand on the ball. Good ball movement there for Florida AM, and and it results in their fifth three of the evening. They really move that basketball, especially when it touches paint. They had seven threes against Georgia Tech early in the year and a tough loss, and they beat Austin P. and also had seven. That's the most threes they've had in a game. Nice look inside. The foul is called before the pass. Rattlers had five threes all last night. They already have five in this game. Watch the drive. You go inside. You make the extra pass. You find a guy ready to shoot the ball. Reeves doesn't waste any time. Knocks into three. Then gets back on defense. Very well executed by Coach McCallum's Rattlers. Problem for Reeves is that was foul number two, so he has to take a seat. Jones also has a pair. As for the second night in a row, Jones finds himself having to manage foul trouble. But see, you got a guy like Jones who's very active as a senior at 6'9", kid transfer from Tulane. So he's a smart player, but he picked up some not so smart fouls last night. So you got to avoid those. You know, your shot's up, the guy's already by you, don't, there you go. Going the other way. Foul don't. called on Graves. See, Ron, those are the fouls that drive Coach Moten, Coach McKellum, and every other coach in America absolutely nuts. It's away from the ball. All you got to do is be stationary. Hold your position. Let your guy run off the screen. Don't move. Possession loss. And it's his second foul. Another quiet start for Randolph in the scoring column. He's only taken two shots. Nearly picked off that time by Kaiser. 
Late shot clock three, catches nothing as Fennell comes the other way. Feed inside to double. Maxwell. There's a double, reverse it. Open three, that one doesn't fall. That was the right place to throw the ball, the right person to get the shot. And loose on the dribble there for Randolph. Spear is fouled. Spear is one of those guys that may, and it's, it's amazing because he's such a, a young kid, only a freshman, he's had some really good ball games, but doesn't ever look like he's in a hurry to do anything. Just always kind of under control, keeps the same demeanor, makes the play, whether you're going to make or miss, he's doing the same thing, gives you some pressure on the basketball. And again, we were talking about it last night, and we're saying again, I think he's going to have an excellent career at Florida a &M. Already one of the best freshmen in the league. Shoot his first free throws of the evening. Hits the first on the one and one as the Rattlers are in the bonus with 4.09 to play here in the first half. It's made a three point basket in 15 of 16 ball games for Florida AM. So, again, you know, showing a lot of consistency and maturity as a freshman. Knocks those three, those free throws in really smooth. Yeah, he's going to be about an 84% free throw shooter now after making those two. You did that that quick. He's 83.3. I figure two for two, right? It's got to bump you up at least two tenths. Okay. How's that? How I'm, that impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I don't know if it's right. That's just a guess. I'm going to start calling you the human computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where were you when I was taking an algebra class all those times? I can do this, man. <laughs> Rattlers by four as we go to break. Three, two, four. You're right. <laughs> The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Available at CJ Kaiser, the senior from Baltimore, making things smooth. Step back jumper gets it. Usually in rhythm. Again, what we said, when he catches the ball off the bounce, sometimes things are good. In transition, look ahead. That's nice. That's a high soaring eagle for a basket. Kaiser gets his game going. The team seems to start to build some momentum. Again, leading scorer in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Off to a nice start in this ball game with 10 points. Free throw attempt for Jameer Williams upcoming. 46%. Hits the first. It's a five-point lead for the Rattlers. If he makes this one, what, are you going to change the percentage, no, right? No, not going there this time. That, uh, that first one was a layup because it was 83.3. Lay violation. Now, now we're getting into all kinds of statistics here. <laughs> I set myself up for failure now. You're going to want it every time. No, 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 because, you know, like I told you, <laughs> you know, you know, had some problems sometime in algebra class. So one I'm for not two, gonna, that's 50%. There you go, I we got that. Yeah, and the first one didn't, the second one didn't count. I, yeah. we, we, we together. <laughs> We did get some things I can still do. If you're central now, be efficient on offense, and fam's just got to continue. Say, I was about to say, don't reach. Spear called for the foul. Just the sixth team foul for Florida A&M, though. See, uh, imagine this is going to be baseline out of bounds, and it is. No shots on that. Of course, the Eagles wanted two free throws. Officials have other ideas. <laughs> It's a good veteran crew tonight. Kaiser launches the quick three. He is feeling it, has 13 here in the first half. Did not put the ball to the floor that time, did he? Caught it, turned in rhythm, knocked down the jump. Kaiser doing it every which way. A couple of threes. Central back in that zone again. Looking for the reverse that time was Johnny Brown. Instead, the Eagles a chance to tie or take the lead. Melvin inside is fouled. 
And this will be free throws for NC Central. Just one of three from the line thus far tonight. We were talking about it a little bit last night. Worth noting, I think, for both teams, but Central has only been to the free throw line in games more than their opponent three times this year, one and two when they've done that. So, you know, getting to the free throw line, getting some of those easy points. Very, I think I think as you get closer and closer to the playoffs, the end of the playoffs and tournament time, and then even though getting to the free throw line more than your opponent, making those easy points can really help you win some basketball games. It can any time, but I think especially this time of the year because you're playing a lot more half-court basketball. Not only did Florida A&M shoot more than NC Central last night, 19 to 18, they also made them at a much better clip, 16 for 19 yesterday evening for Coach McCollum's squad. Not necessarily the case today, though, just four for nine. Yeah, not getting there, again, not taking the contact, had a little point-blank shot there, and just the float game just a little bit off. Ticking down toward two and a half to play here in the first. The lead is one. Kaiser, man, on a mission here tonight. Goes the fall-away jumper over several defenders. And Desir clears the glass. They're going to play zone. You got to try to attack it right in the middle. There you go. Nice touch pass. The seer can't finish inside. Moraine is there, though, to clean it up. Haven't called his name a lot tonight, but very active that time. Again, they made the, the ball win in the middle of the floor pretty much. You get to the wing. Baseline guy runs that side. You're going to get a shot. The seer not able to finish, but Moraine does active legs at 6 5, finishes. Moraine had the only double-double for Florida A&M last night, 12 and 10. Two other Rattlers, though, nearly with double-doubles of their own. Randolph was a rebound away. Jones was a bucket away and probably would have had it if not for the foul trouble. Yes, Three near double-doubles. That time the dribble got you in trouble a little bit. You know, you, you've, got, you've got Maxwell. He's dribbling. He's dribbling away from the baseline, so they kind of sneak a little double in there, and he tried to play away from it. He got to travel, but you're right. I, I really was impressed with the way Morang had the active legs. Made those mid-range jump shots, as you said, his third double-double of the season. And, and again, it's just about, sometimes with rebounds, it's about want to. Good steal. Poked away by Kaiser. Melvin in fourth gear as usual. <laughs> Officials say it belongs to the Rattlers with 104 to play here in the first half. Seventh turnover, I mean, sixth turnover by Central, seven for Florida A&M. A little better for Florida A&M than what you had last night, but still I think both coaches would say, you know, the teams, the defenders have not earned those turnovers. We've thrown the ball away too many times. We've been a little careless with it. Trajan Davis steps on. Possession there goes the way of Central, so this is if they'll play two for one here. Foul is called. It'll be on Davis. So we'll walk down the other end of the floor. And got underneath the rebounder. Coach McCollum looking for an explanation. Now you turn it around, maybe it's Florida A&M looking for the two for one. 50.2 to play. Justin Wright returns for the Eagles. And see, the thing also is that, you know, you, you start, this is when you have to understand time and score, not only late in the game, but in a, any time in the game. But, okay, if you can score, you get the ball, the possession there is going your way for North Carolina Central. So this is a big stop for them, I think. You know, you can stop them. Maybe you get time to score again, then you can get the ball back to begin the half unless it's a tie-up. And, and those can be momentum swings, I think. You know, you think last night, Fam got the ball in the second half. They didn't score in that first possession, but Central didn't either. Then the next time they scored, and that helped as they were bringing that 10-point, 13-point lead down. Moraine, fall away jumper. 
Melvin tears down the floor, and he'll shoot free throws. Not quite sure why DeSeer wanted to reach out and, and, and stop the foul that time. It was almost as though he didn't realize maybe they were in the bonus. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. that almost a reaction, right? An instinct is maybe to stop the play there with a foul, but not when you're going to give up free throws. Ninth team foul, so a one and one scenario. You know, that, that was a real run in the Coyote. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know he, he was reaching as hard as he could to try to get and let him go. Especially that, especially, you know, 25, 30 feet away from the basket. So I think I think this year is too valuable for this Rattler team because he's a good rebounder, as we've shown earlier, does a nice job with footwork, and, and he's got really nice hands also. Eagles lead by one and a half. They have trailed for the most part. Randolph, about a two-second differential between shot and game clock. Let's see if the Rattlers play for one. Four flat. Randolph challenging three different defenders. Time for a final shot for the Eagles. Five seconds to play. Palmer. Fall away, baseline jump shot off the rim. It's Maxwell. Grabs the offensive rebound, and that one just rolls off the rim. So in all, Stan, if you're NC Central, you end to halftime with a lead. Got to feel pretty decent about that. You were trailing for most of those first 20 minutes. Yeah, nice job of being able to be efficient and get some baskets. Florida a didn't take advantage of their opportunities, and just as you would expect when the Rattlers and the Eagles play, it's a close first half. NC Central looking for its first win of the season against the Rattlers. Plenty more to come from McDougal McClendon Arena here in Durham on ESPN+. Plus. Limitless possibilities. The boldly new 2021 Nissan Kicks. Back here on ESPN Plus at halftime, NC Central leads Florida A&M for the second night in a row at halftime. This time the margin is one. This year exclusively right here on ESPN Plus, the undefeated presents Why Not Us, North Carolina Central Basketball. Executive produced by NBA All-Star Chris Paul, Stephen A. Smith, and Roadside Entertainment. Let's take a look now at an excerpt from episode three. So you come right here. When you go to a club, who you with all the time? That boy, I know you in there. You, you, I know you ain't missing the club. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and Devin and Justin, y'all get back here. Y'all ready for this one? All right. So as you drive, we'll have some cops walk up on the scene, and you guys got to respond accordingly. You got it? This is our role play. Let's go. I know you don't, don't don't even hit me with the 11 and 3 or 9 and 3 because you, you lean them back. Go on and recline your seat and let's go. All right? You ready? Go. Hey. <laughs> I feel like any black person, whenever whenever you get poured over, it's just always that, that just feeling. It's just like, damn, anything can happen from here. Woo -woo -woo -woo. <laughs> Roll the window down, guy. You know why I pulled you over? No. You don't know why I pulled you over? Get your damn license and registration. Uh, I don't want to get your out. Where you yeah. headed? Oh, Where you guys Put headed? your hands on your head. License. On your head. License. Spread your leg. License. I need you guys to step out. On? Step you out the vehicle. On you? Right here. Step out of the vehicle, young man. Get step out. out. Get out. Let's go. On your knees. On your knee, on your knees, on your knees, hands you behind your head. What's head, in the car? Hands behind What's your in head. In the Interlock your fingers. Interlock your fingers. Young man, step out. Step out. You see what happened to your buddy right here. Step out. Lay down. Lay down. Where's your ID? As a black man, I have to raise my child with the harsh reality that. He's still a black man. And whenever he's 16 years old, and I have to teach him how to drive a car. Watch your mouth. Where's your ID? I have to teach him how to parallel park. I have to teach him how to keep two hands on the wheel. I have to teach him how to three-point turn. But I also have to teach him 
how to respond when the cop pulls them over. My kids don't have to do that. I don't want y'all being in that position. And I don't want y'all thinking this cannot happen to me. And we're doing this because this happened to your coach. I feel like that hit home for everybody that was in there. When growing up, your parents tell you, your siblings tell you, whenever they, they come, just sit quiet, don't make no sudden movements. Always talk your action, what you about to do. I'm about to reach in my pocket, I'm about to give you this, this, and this, and hope for the best, basically. The first thing you did, you was reaching. What happens on that? You get shot. There you go. When they... It's cool to be black at a black college, but we don't live in a black world. My goal for raising VJ. Take the ball in the cone. Initially, it was to to provide and protect. That's something my father was 0 for 2 on. He didn't provide for me. He ain't protect me. He left me out there. You go down here. Start with uh, the warm up in between. Walk walk okay. up there. Ready? Walk up there. Okay. Keep it tight. Heels on the grass. Chest what? Up. All right, let's go. Go. My father left when I was four. Chest up. When your father walk out that house and you're a four-year-old kid, Good. that does something to you. Triple. Wanna go triple? At an early age in life, I always ask go. God, please don't let anything happen to my mom. Because if anything happened to her, my brother and I was gonna have to go into the system. You gotta hit him with some stuff. Let's go. Good. Good, good. I like it. Head up. Head up. Good. Set him up on the cross. The blessing of those two kids of mine, Brooke and, and VJ Bell Jr., it's, it's changed my life. Go through, through the legs and behind the back. All right, go. I always do the best that I can because I don't want them feeling the way I felt about my father. Like, that's... You know, I just wanted to break that generational curse because I know how important a father is and they ain't have it. Start of the second half, just moments away here on ESPN Plus for the second night in a row. The Rattlers try to come back from halftime deficit, looking for the season sweep. And that strong contributions from Jai Clark and Evans DeSeer in the first half. Those two combined for 14 points and four rebounds. DeSeer, especially, he didn't score a night ago, doing a bit of everything. There he dishes for the three. The Rattlers. 5 of 12 from the three-point line in the first half. Did a better job limiting turnovers at 13 a day ago. Only seven this evening, and C.J. Kaiser responding nicely for the Eagles. Kaiser, 13 points on five of nine from the field. Two threes as well. Came off the bench, but played 15 minutes in half number one. There you see the game summary to this point. Better shooting effort for the Eagles from long distance after a 5 of 27 performance less than 24 hours ago. Two things that stand out for me right now. Both teams are shooting almost the same percentage, 42% from the field for Florida and 44 for North Carolina Central. Last night, 28... Up basket there 28 points in the paint for Florida a &M, only 14 today so being able to score inside is going to be very important 28 24 last night can you score inside and can you not turn the ball over Moraine uses the pump fake and scores inside 
It's almost like they had two different offenses last night. You know, what they can they do and can they isolate? They didn't. Same thing on that position there. They kind of isolated the side from Moraine. Perkins stepped on the baseline. His first turnover of the night. Second leading assist man in program history. He's going to probably finish up number six all time in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. Guy Langley, the kid over at AT. Hope I said the name. I should say this with school in Greensboro. <laughs> <laughs> but he you broke your own rule. He continued. Well, no, no, that's the Central Eagle. That's rule. what I mean. Yeah, 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 in the nest you know, here. Hope, yeah. they, hope they didn't hear me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it continues this move that record further and further over 600 assists. But uh, a phenomenal career for uh, you know, Jordan Perkins. You know, he got three rings and like to get a fourth one. Florida AM like to get a fourth win over NC Central this year. Sweep the season series. Obviously, this modified schedule here in the COVID-19 season as Reeves hits another three, sixth three for the Rattlers this evening. And unless they play each other in the tournament, this will be the last meeting for a long time of these two schools. Florida AM along with Bethune Cookman going to the SWAC, you know, next season. AT gonna go to uh, the Big South. So you know, you've seen a lot of history. Florida Ames won four BAC championships, so is Central. So there's a lot of things on the line right now, but that's just a nice little easy pass. You get a guy in rhythm. Reeves continues to get good looks, and when he's getting those looks, he's comfortable. He's able to knock those down. Reeves and Clark both have three threes on the night. Those two are combined six for ten. Fennell goes to the line to try to complete the three-point play and does. Eighty-four percent free throw shooter is Finnell. Let's see how much Randolph tries to initiate the offense, but also try to score. Just one of three from the field there. Had Reeves cutting to the basket, and Cameron Reeves a little frustrated with himself there. Ball kind of caught it in between hops, kind of bounced up a little bit on him. Got to reach and grab that ball instead of letting it come to him. But that was a nice pass on the point. Reeves playing with two fouls. Token pressure on Perkins. Kaiser, who had that strong first half, into the paint once again, draws the foul. That could be the third on Reeves. And it will be. It's Spear, actually, who gets called for the foul. Either way, though, that is his third. Yeah, they're gonna change it. And now yeah. it is. Okay, yeah. so it is Reeves. Got the third foul part on lock here. Just trying to figure out whose third it is. And, and it is Reeves. Says, look, I had both fingers up. You had to see the other finger. <laughs> this is a very solid crew tonight. Maxwell hits the three. Maxwell shooting that perimeter shot with a lot of confidence and only made two threes all season long and that was back in December so that's a bonus for them on the outside. Nearly tipped away by Watley. Under 10 on the shot clock Randolph kicks it out. Spear is fouled. Is it going to be on the three point attempt. Kaiser administers the foul, his third. Just step out. Those post guys, those three, four guys for North Carolina Central have the ability to make that shot. And that was a very, very confident, just step away from the basket. And Maxwell doesn't hesitate and buries a three. And again, if he's able to make that shot, that makes the offense even more fluid because that, that opens up the middle. Fennell gets called for the foul. So Reeves with three and Kaiser with three fouls apiece. Two important players for each of these teams. Reeves is still on the floor playing with those three fouls. Kaiser has taken a seat. It's off of Jones, ping pongs around a bit and ends up in the hands of Palmer. Palmer will step into a three off the heel. Maxwell tipped it away from Perkins unintentionally. It's a three on one the other way. And Moraine with the finish. 
Great hustle and an excellent job of running the floor and throwing it up high for Moraine to finish it. Randolph just checked that ball down, outran other players from North Carolina Central. Only one missed shot here in the second half thus far for both teams combined. Finale with time. The hot shooting continues. Nicholas Fidel. He's got a pair of threes and nine points on the night. This looks a little bit more like the NC Central Conference leading three point shooting team here this evening. Well, one, they're getting some nice shots. They're getting some nice looks, and they've had these looks, and they didn't fall in the first half. Secondly, you've got to do a better job defending the shooter if you're Florida a and You've got to come out and contest the basket by Maxwell a moment ago, the basket by Fennell. There was no one within three or four feet, you know, of, of, of the shooter. Really gives social distance in a different name, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a rare miss here in the second half. It stays with the Rattlers and a fresh shot clock. Let's see, these are those plays that are driving the coaching staff absolutely crazy. You know, second chance opportunity you're allowing Florida a and to have on a team that had a nice shot a moment ago. This is a little 1-4 set. So how do you try to isolate to get the basketball in Randolph's hand or your spear? Batted right back out of bounds by Palmer. Trying to get the clock right, I think we're going to reset that to 20. Either that or maybe run one second yeah. off of it because it hit the hand of Palmer. There it is. 19 on the shot clock. There we go. Randolph gets by Perkins and draws the foul on Maxwell. And this is about the time of the game last <laughs> night that Randolph took over. Exactly. Exactly. Jones picked up his third foul and then picked up the fourth one at about the, well, I think, a 15-40 mark. He picked up the fourth foul, and from that point on, it was all Florida A&M. First free throws of the night for Randolph. Now Spears will come off the floor. Jones will as well. As Desir checks back in, solid first half for Evans Desir, as we showed you at the start of this half. Randolph hits both. So a little two guard pressure, just token pressure, just try to make Central work a little bit. Standing a good defensive stance of Spear. Perkins. That was a good defensive possession. You got the guy that probably is the worst perimeter shooter of the bunch. And then yet another unforced turnover. Double digit turnovers again for the Rattlers. That one of the unforced variety. 15-54 to go. Eagles by three here at the nest. Oh my goodness. Roll up with Supreme to see what I mean. Ryan, I want to just kind of send our thoughts and prayers out to the Eagle family and to Doug Wilkerson's family down in Fayetteville, North Carolina, whatever. Doug Wilkerson was an all-pro uh, lineman for the San Diego Chargers, but guy just started North Carolina Central. We lost him last week and just want to kind of give him a tribute. As you look at some of the names and the legends, some of the great legends at North Carolina Central, you know, Sam Jones, obviously. We were talking about Tex Harrison yesterday, who used to be, was a star here, and the CIAA Hall of Fame was the Globetrotters coach for many, many years. And the Amber Congolo played for the Olympic team and then Lavelle Moten. And I bet you didn't know. Have you ever seen Good Times? I have you not. Good times? You ever seen Good Times? You never no. seen Good Times? No, man. No. You, well, I anyway, gotta expand my pictures, horizons a little bit. The pictures in Good Times, as there's a tip basket right there. Ernie Barnes, who played here, 
was the, was the artist of that. Was a, it was a North Carolina Central alum, and you know, big John Baker who played for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers back in day. And not to forget, real quick, I'm giving you lessons. We'll watch this. This is good. Look, let me give you a lesson real quick. I right had the free throw there. statistics. You've but, got the the no, arts here. Mystery, real quick. You know, Bob Hayes went to Florida A and M. And you know, Athelia Gibson went to Florida A&M, was a star tennis player, U.S. Open, first African-American to win the U.S. Open and also Wimbledon. Pam Oliver, you know Pam Oliver. Andre Dawson, Nate, Noose, Nate Newton. I mean, the history lesson. But here's the thing that's real cool. This is cool, cool, cool. You can win a bar bet with this. Did you know that Florida A&M and North Carolina Central both had mayors of Atlanta that attended their school? Keisha Lance Bottoms at the Florida A&M and Maynard Jackson with North Carolina Central. You just never know the stuff that I'm going to tell I, you I'm about. coming out of this broadcast a smarter person than I when I got into I want it. I'm going to just leave it at that. Cannonball Adderley, jazz musician, went to Florida A&M. Herman Boone, remember the Titans? That's right. North Carolina Central. If you walk through the concourse of McClendon McDougal Arena, you just see it's a great sport history lesson. It's a great social lesson. You should do that. But I just wanted to give these people some love and some tribute. There's a whole lot more. I know, I know, I forgot, but only so much I can talk about because the game's going on. No, great stuff, Stan. Nate Newton, by the way, Chad Lampman, our fine producer this evening, a Cowboys fan, maybe the best offensive line in NFL history, those early 90s Cowboys. Yeah, Philadelphia 76ers, Clem Johnson, Metalark Lemon, speaking of the Harlem Globetrotters, had attended Florida A&M University, the Rattlers, Ken Riley, the legend. I mean, there's a lot of history in this place, man. We call you the encyclopedia from here on out. Well, this stuff this is you impressive. gotta know. You just need to know. Robert Massey with the New Orleans Saints for many years, all pro. Kim Coles with the Central. I'm sure I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let me tell you that's one. You like baseball? I do. Andre Dawson. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Let me get back to basketball there. I can talk about this guy's stuff all night long. This <laughs> Eagles, is history. Eagles by seven here with under 15 to play. Some of these people, the reason we're in here playing today. So I got to always give them some props. What did we miss? <laughs> I'm trying to look at the box score right now. So what happened the last couple minutes? Yeah. I've been mesmerized by the history lesson. In the meantime, the Eagles draw the foul. And never forget about Coach McClendon. Of all things, never forget about Coach McClendon. You know, one is won a national championship, and you know Tennessee A and I was a coach for the, Cle the first African American coach of the Cleveland Pipers. You know who the owner was of Cleveland Pipers? This is my last thing to tell you. Take a guess. I have no idea. Mr. Mr. Mathman, George Steinbrenner. Okay. In the old ABL. Mr. Mathman. <laughs> in the old ABL. George coach, Steinbrenner. Coach I think McClendon. He bought the Yankees for Later somewhere. On. Yeah. Yes, of course. But he got a pretty good deal on it. I think he bought them for in the tens of millions and. It's worth five billion at this point, something like it's kind of like a well, he, one of your financial moves. You know, no question about it. And Central making some good moves on the perimeter, knocking down shots. It's a double-digit lead. Not for long, though. Spear lays it in, but the Eagles have slowly extended here. Made three of their last four shots. The lead is eight. As Melvin walks it across half court. And now if you're Florida A&M, you've got to, you've had the history lesson, so you know of all the legends before you. And so now you've got to pull in that Rattler spirit and play some solid defense. The Eagles are going to continue to fly high and move the ball. Baseline jump shot misses. Crashing the offensive glass, but fouling in the process was Palmer. Talk about that Rattler defense. It's a program known for its defense under coach Robert McCollum. 13 19 to play. Oh, I forgot one more. I got to do this one. The legendary Chicago Bear running back, Willie Gallimore, attended Florida AM. Chicago Bears had some pretty good running backs in their time. Yeah, but you know, forget the story. There yeah. you go. <laughs> anyway, so you, you have to remember those things. If you don't, if you don't talk about your legends, you're never gonna know. And there's a lot of great history both of these schools. But anyway, back to back to new legends and new history. Sam, you making some history or trying to with the season sweep of North Carolina Central University. Getting a road win in this series alone is a bit of history. They did that already last night. Here comes Melvin the other way. Looking for Bowles with the strong finish. Bowles does it on both ends of the floor. Gets the block on one end, hustles down the floor, and gets the finish. 
Bowles only played six minutes last night, but he's brought a ton of energy to the floor here this evening. The lead is 10 for North Carolina Central as they look to defend their home court. End to end we go. Bowles with the finish inside. Fifty four points already for NC Central here tonight. They had fifty eight the entire game yesterday. Twenty of sixty one from the field an evening ago. Same number of field goals made only thirty nine shots necessary though here tonight Stan. Making a few more shots inside as well as around the perimeter seven to fifteen from three line gives you a grand total of fifty one percent night so again if you shoot like that for nccu and you're forcing turnovers you know you have a good chance of winning this basketball game that's the formula for north carolina central high percentages turn the team over another mishandle that time by reeves with the open layup and the play was there so 12th turnover tonight for fam you and it's just a matter of just you know execute it just catch the basketball first Seen a few of those type turnovers where the ball just slips through the hands of one of the Florida AM players. Well, the easiest way to let, get the layup is to catch the ball first. Palmer off balance. Jones comes away with it. Hey, if you're Florida AM, this is a time where you've got to start becoming more efficient offensively. Be the sixth team foul there on the Eagles. So one away from the bonus here for the Rattlers. And as we go to break here with 11.55 to go. Second game of a back-to-back -back between North Carolina Central and Florida A&M. But if you get home and your ooh is more fun, hmm, you have 100 days to change your mind. That's the VisionWorks difference. VisionWorks, see the difference. Jonathan Maxwell picked up his third foul. He and Kaiser each have three. Reeves the only Rattler with three. As teams break the huddle, Florida A&M trying to make up a 10-point deficit. They did it at halftime last night, but just 11.55 to play now. Last night, you know, they had 17 second-chance points. Out rebounded Central by 13, and tonight not quite the same result. Central's out rebounded them by three, and the second champ points are about the same. They look inside to Jones, the two-handed flush. Boy, I like him. He can get off the floor. He's so active, those long arms finish around the rim. Jones getting to see much more of the floor this second half than he did an evening ago when he had four fouls early. Trying to get out and guard that three. Palmer misses. Let's see if that play by Jones can ignite Florida AM offensively. Jones able to keep that possession alive. Randolph avoids the charge and hits the floater. Wow, did you see how he just stopped and just elevated? Perfect jump stop, except off two feet. It was off one foot, but I like the play. Lead is down to half a dozen. Palmer tries another three. Momentum play right now. Randolph dealing with the double team. Fennell comes over. Spear, one dribble. Kicked over to Reeves for three, and he's got it. Brian, that was excellent. You read the double off the baseline, you make the cross-court pass, and then the extra pass, you got a shooter ready to knock one down. Nice run by Florida A&M. 7-0 run, in fact, over the last 229, and that is a timeout for Lavelle Moten as the, most of the lead has evaporated. And you think about this, after the timeout, you started running the set play, and this all kind of starts for Florida A&M off the Jones dunk. Good. Good unselfish play, goes back door, finishes strong. 
You love to see guys catch the ball and then flush it, flush it with some authority. Not a lot you could do. All the white shirts are kind of looking around. Then you come back, you get a little one-foot jumper off a good stop. Then you get a great movement of the basketball, knock down three. And what was a 10-point lead a few moments ago now has become a three-point. That's just good rhythm. And see the defender's just about two steps too late, that being Bowles. Remember, Bowles had to block in a dunk a few moments ago. Not able to get there in time to make the play this time. Eagles perhaps falling a bit too much in love with the three as well. They've missed their last couple during this run. Start to wonder now how long will Kaiser stay on the sideline with those three fouls? He's actually out there on the floor with the ball right now. There's the answer to your question, Stan. Very good. That'll do it. You ask and you shall receive. It'll stay with NC Central. Yeah, I think Coach Moten had seen enough of his team without 22 out there. Well, again, you, you don't want to settle for jump shots. You talked about it last night about speeding up shooters and whatnot and that thing. And that's the situation there where your team comes down and scores and you're trying to get a hurry and you're making one pass as opposed to making a second or a third pass and getting a better shot. You take a good shot and it doesn't fall and boom, they go rebound, they score and, you know, 10 goes to three. Jones, a tough guy to inbound against. Saw him deflect away that first pass. This is a spot throw in. That one deflected out, so it'll be a third time for the Eagles trying to just inbound the ball here with 10 minutes on the dot remaining in this game and a three-point lead. Need to know if you're central. Seven seconds on the clock, so once you get it in, what are you going to do? Melvin with two on the clock has to throw that one up. Offensive rebound by Maxwell. And a late shot clock possession. The Eagles get the offensive rebound and perhaps a three-point play. You must secure the basketball. You've got to grab it and be strong. And Maxwell, who took a blow to the head early today, says, listen, I've shown some blood. I'm going to give you some more. Goes inside strong, gets contact, finishes, lets out a yell. Now for the three-point play to change the momentum for the Eagles. Your Florida A&M, you get the stop you need, maybe go down, chance to of tie. Course. Instead, you give up the offensive rebound and a three-point play, and now that doubles the lead. Randolph, who picked up that foul a moment ago. Ray's very intent. He'll be called for the foul. See, you've got to understand on film and scouting report, when he takes those dribbles and goes baseline, you, you got to pin him there. Okay, you got to, you got to, he's on the baseline, so he's flat. And you just can't let him just try to create, get the ball back to the basket area. Anticipate he's going to make the cross-court pass or he's going to make a pass behind him. But you can't let him get out of that when the baseline is there. A bit of foul trouble now for NC Central as Graves joins Kaiser and Maxwell with three fouls. Graves has been the one to check Randolph quite a bit. First free throw that Randolph has missed tonight. He's three of four. There's a 10-second violation. Wow. You can go a lot of ball games and not see a 10-second. We've seen them in two consecutive nights. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, you know. Need I say it, but it's, this is that time where you just got to know time and score. You keep a running clock in your head on all possessions. Jones facilitating from the post. He's not going to shoot there. He'll shoot there, though. Randolph will call that a pass. Possession stays alive for Florida A&M. Five seconds on the shot clock. That one bricks off the backboard for Reeves. Diving on the floor was Moraine. Wasn't sure that ball drew iron. Yeah, I was wondering why the shot clock reset. And but I think that's the question that Finell is asking right now. Coach Moten certainly is also. I saw a replay last night where they took some time to understand whether it was a shot clock violation. We may get something similar here as two of the officials discuss things. 
that ball went across the rim. So they're thinking that it caught the backside. The other one we had last night was kind of on the other side of the globe. So we'll take a look at this and just just to trying to see. Clock wind down. All right. Now that didn't hit anything. At first glance, it did not seem like it hit the rim. The referees will take a look. 8.57 on the clock. Ball the five hits. point lead for the Eagles. W watch, watch. See there. Oh, yeah, that's the underpin. That's an easy one. But the thing is now is how much time was remaining before they changed the shot clock. You know what I'm saying? Yep, That's absolutely. Saying. Yeah, because we know it's not going to be 20 on the clock. I, I want to say that that ball hit the backboard with about six on the clock. We'll, we'll probably then, be able to see it here. And then there was a scramble for the basketball. And I would dare say this might be a shot clock violation and, and the Eagles bell. There's all this going on here unless unless they're going to say that ball was tipped out by Graves. If it's Florida A&M ball, it's probably going to be with two or three it, seconds oh, left. Totally maybe. agree. Exactly. There's six on the clock when you hit the backboard there. You see at the top of yeah. your screen. And, and so you figure a couple ticks. See, it just, yeah. as, soon, as soon as it hit, you could see, you could barely see it, but our eagle eyes caught it. it re, the clock reset. So they're going to put 20 back on it? No, they haven't done anything. Yeah, we'll see how this plays out. It's either going to be a very late shot clock scenario for the Rattlers or NC Central ball. So there's a couple of things to figure out here. Who has the ball and then how much time is on the shot clock from there? Well, if they determined that that ball was tipped by Graves, it very well could be uh, Fam's ball with about, a, like you said, about one or two seconds remaining. And so that's why I'm where I am, and I just sit and wait and let every Jackie and the crew decide, and they'll tell me. <laughs> so if it is Florida A&M ball, what do you do here? I got to find out how much time is left. Got to think it's two, three seconds maybe, something in that neighborhood. Then you've got time for a shot to play. If it's, if it's a 20-second reset, then just play basketball. Yeah, I think – so it doesn't hit the rim, so they're going to look at the clock. Nine minutes roughly, 901, 958. So that's maybe a three or four seconds down yeah. from six. Three seconds on, yeah, there we go. That's it, that's it. Stan, we're on top of it. That's we, all I'm going to say. We Not really to are. our own horn here, but, you know. No, no we, it's, it's good to toot it. That's why I was talking about all those people, <laughs> all those legends. I mean, you got toot the horn, tell it. You do a good job. Hey. And, but the officials did an even better job. They didn't get caught up in the moment. Three seconds left. Moraine catch and shoot. I don't think that one caught any iron either. See, they had more time than they really thought or executed. So it goes down as another turnover. The 13th of the game for Florida A&M. They're getting close to that total of 18 they had yesterday. Still able to win that game, but you want to walk that tightrope too often. Don't think they can win this game if they have 18 turnovers tonight. Melvin. Kaiser. Long three. The Eagles have gone a bit cold from three-point land here in the last few minutes. Randolph hits the jumper. You spoke about that. You remember they went cold last night about this time of the game. And this is also about the time that Randolph kind of took over. He's up to nine ways. now. He's got nine points, five rebounds, four assists as Randolph. Another miss. Maxwell, another offensive rebound. Second time he's done that here in the last few minutes. Great job of Jonathan Maxwell at 6'6". Just goes up strong, uses the left hand and the glass and gets the basket. Started his career at Iona, played a couple other places also, but has come to North Carolina Central and has really given him some brute strength inside the paint. Eagles won for their last five from three, but Maxwell has turned two of those misses into layups. Now he defends Jones, baby hook, off the mark. Gotta love that from Maxwell. He's a guy, you don't have to run any plays for no. him. It's just his effort, gets his points through effort.
Looking for position on the post, guarded by Randolph there. Now he has the ball. Five seconds on the shot clock. And he scores again. Great job defending him, but the problem was he was left-handed, so you let him turn to the middle on his left side. That's an easy pass to understanding the clock. A dozen on five of seven from the field for Maxwell, who missed quite a bit of time in this game after getting patched up. Caught an elbow unintentionally from DJ Jones early in this game. Randolph, he's starting to find the rhythm now. He's going to open up sides and let him work. Both teams continue to shoot well here in the second half, both over the 50% mark. Kaiser is fouled. Spears' third foul of the evening. 6.20 to play. The Eagles hanging on to a five-point lead here in the Bull City. Jonathan Maxwell, you talk about perseverance. Goes in early in the ball game, gets popped upside the head, leaves a little blood on the floor, and he comes back in the second half, and man, has he been a man possessed. Loose ball, late possession, goes up, scores there. Watch this, jump shot goes up. Big guy just active, won't to, making plays. You know, five out of seven shooting the ball, the senior from Virginia Beach. Watch this, working to the left side of the floor, going to the middle. Yeah, we got you, big fella. Very, very impressive second half. Very, very impressive basketball game for the 6'6 senior. 12 points on five of seven shooting, and all impressive four rebounds. And all of those rebounds on the offensive end of the floor, he's turned at least three of them into layups. Had to bust out the blood jersey, 32 now instead of 23 for Maxwell. And those are those second chance points that we were talking about early in the ball game that Florida a &M got so many of last night. Offensive? Yeah, they got Fennell, 61-56. It's the eighth team foul for the Eagles. Rattlers for the second half in a row have avoided putting NC Central in the bonus. Jones going inside against Maxwell. That pass a little too far even for the long arms of Jones that time. You, you lead him, but you, you, the guy's working hard on the box like that. You don't want to take him off the box. You know, he hit the target. He gave out the right hand on long, you know, just, just a bad pass. And again, it goes back to what we talked about the other day. The art of the bounce pass, learning how to feed the post. Oh, got away with, nope. Spear draws the foul on his counterpart. Number one, Mike Melvin. That won't be free throws, but the double bonus, the next infraction. Florida a &M really needs a basket here. Spear goes to the baseline, jump shot, he's fouled, and he hits it. Graves picks up his fourth, and a chance to draw even closer as Spear goes to the line. I told you, this guy, you, you better start to pay attention, Rattler fans, because this guy's going to give you something. Saw the contact, drove the baseline, strong side right. Great concentration and a little emotion out of the freshman that time. Spear two for two from the line tonight. 84% shooter on the season. Misses that one though and Fennell grabs the rebound. Spear and Melvin going man against man right there. One versus one. They switch. Looking down low to Maxwell. Jones again able to step around. and But it was a post pass, wasn't it? Yep. Got the second time tonight. Throw it to the body, throw it to the side. Three off the mark for Reeves. Bryce came up limping a little bit. 
One of the few times Kaiser has not had Randolph in front of him and he misses everything on that three. Coach Moten has his arms extended, perhaps wondering about that shot. And Kaiser taps himself on the head. The best measure right now for both teams is to get some movement. You gotta screw up your passes on both sides. Those post passes have not been good in the last two possessions. Get your basket, play some D. Randolph's being guarded by Kaiser. Empty possessions here for the Eagles. Rattlers a chance to tie after being down 10 just a moment ago. Spear for three, grazes the front of the rim. Maxwell shorthanded as he has been on a number of occasions here tonight. Kaiser, down low to Maxwell. Been so good underneath the basket tonight. Nice catch, great recognition by Kaiser, and then using the left side of the rim to protect the shot blocker for a left-handed player, going to a strong side. A game-high 14 now for Maxwell. It's his season high, I think, also. Moraine with the finish over Palmer, who had to lean out of the way. He had 13 early in the year, get down at Coastal Carolina. 14 this season, his best. Saving your best for last. Yeah. Tournament's right around the corner. Next career week. high. Season North. high, career high for Maxwell. Yeah. Fennell kept his feet on the ground. Gets to the basket and finishes. Oh, my goodness. Randolph loses it. Guess who? He's been everywhere tonight for the Eagles. Maxwell comes away with the steal. It's a big basket and then a big defensive play for Central. Now you now you milk the clock. And so how do you want to play this if you're Florida A&M? You can only allow them one shot. If you're Central, just run the clock, one four flat. Let's try to start their offense about right now. Six on the clock. Perkins. Palmer. Travel. So the Eagles able to run some clock, but it's another empty possession. A five-point lead, though, for NC Central, trying to win their regular season finale on their home floor in Durham. Georgia. They're an enduring symbol. Georgia. And this April, the Azaleas are back at the Masters. Fourteen points, five rebounds, an assist, a block. Jonathan Maxwell is having himself a game. There you see the career high, and they've come at opportune times too, usually off of missed baskets. A lot of times that would mean the end of the possession, but not with Maxwell in the house tonight. Just hanging around the rim, you know, and then, and then when you get a chance, be physical and finish out. It's just third double-figure basketball game. And, yeah, before I forget about it, as this game gets close, just want to thank everyone, all our medical professionals on both schools, you know, their staff, the coaching staffs, everyone involved with trying not only to get this game off, but to get through this. This has been the craziest season ever. And there's so many people that got this stuff done and, and are helping to play. And just want to just say thank you all. Too many names, but you all know who you are. And special tip of the hat to Commissioner Thomas of the MEAC and his staff for their leadership getting through the pandemic. Well said, Stan. Would have been very easy to simply fold up camp and not play this year, but well, providing just, experience for everybody. And not only just, you know, the physical side, but the mental aspect and trying to keep the guys safe and healthy. And what, you know, just everybody collectively is joining. And it didn't matter what school you were from or you know, where you lived. Everybody was working together for health and safety. And so... You know, just want to just thank everyone and, and just thank you. Just thank you. Kaiser looking inside for Maxwell there, but it's turned over and suddenly the Rattlers a chance to tie here. That was a post entry too, just to one more little topic, you know. Just yep. Shot fakes and ball fakes. Don't wind it down too long if you're fam. You need to be able to get a shot or a rebound. They're going one on one. Here we go. Randolph against Kaiser. That one is poked away by Finnell. Three on two the other way for the Eagles. Palmer will have to earn it at the free throw line. It's a good foul there by Brown. 
And it's one of those fouls you have to make sure he didn't make the basket. Randolph thought he was going to be able to get past Kaiser quickly enough. Kaiser did just enough to hold him up, and then the double came. The double came with a steal, and then away you go. And exactly, you talk about a play that maybe changes the momentum and changes the freak of this game. That may have been the play. 56% shooter. Palmer Pure on the first. Both teams, two timeouts remaining. Minute 13 to go. Rattlers in the double bonus. Next team foul on Florida A&M will be the seventh, so NC Central will shoot the rest of the way. Big, very big. Two possession lead. Central puts some pressure on the basketball token. You cannot foul in this situation. Cover the three, make them shoot hard twos. Moraine. Inside to Jones and Maxwell was there. Not even looking, able to corral the pass for his team. Not sure if that ball went in Jones's hands or Maxwell got a deflection either way. It was a hard pass to get in there, but one that I think should have been caught and could have got a finish home. Randolph instead has to foul Perkins. He'll shoot one and one. Perkins a 64% shooter. Eagles shoot just shy of 70% as a team. Free throws will be critical down the stretch here. Front end is good. It's a guy that's won, been a part of three championships at North Carolina Central. It's just kind of fitting that he goes to the free throw line in the final 48 seconds of his time on the court at McClendon McDougal Arena. This one to make it a three possession game. Just off the mark. FAMU has to go quickly here. Reeves. A lot of time on this possession. Yeah, taking a little too much time. Down to 30 seconds to play. Randolph off of one leg, able to hit the two. 28 seconds left. He's made two or three of those tonight, you know? He's got 13. Coach Robert McCollum uses one of his two remaining timeouts. Two. Both teams looking to carry some momentum into next week. MEAC tournament on the horizon. Yes, indeed. I mean, Rob Jones is doing a great job at Norfolk State. Juan Dixon up here at Coppin State. You know, I, I know Derek Carter, the AD, is happy about that. And again, it's going to be up in Norfolk 7th through the 11th and 13th. And you just, you know, ESPNU, ESPN3, D2. You know, the whole platform, everybody from ESPN is going to be watching the MEAC tournament. And North Carolina Central has won the last three. And as I mentioned, you know, FAMU, this is their last year in the in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. They've won four uh, tournament championships. Central's won four. You know, ant has got the longest list of them at 16. So a lot of history. And it's going to be a good tournament, a safe tournament. Be there and if you can. And, and it'll be good. And I, I may be there myself. <laughs> First time that we are seeing Alex Caldwell tonight as he comes on and is fouled, so he'll shoot 1-1. One, one. How about that? First time you see the floor within seconds, shooting 1-1 one and one at the free throw line. 23.5 remaining. This becomes kind of a math problem. We've talked about math a little bit tonight. If <laughs> NC Central doesn't turn the ball over and hits their free throws, it's going to be hard for Florida A&M to win this game. That's the formula. Caldwell's good on the first. Three for three now on the season. Remember I told you about the nine-minute mark that if, if FAM had 18 turnovers like they had last night, they probably wouldn't win the game. Last check, they had 17. That's exactly right. So now you got to push the ball up the floor. You've got shooters in the game, so you got to get a good look and get a knockdown shot. The clock stops under a minute, so I don't know if you need to use a timeout. It just depends on how long it takes you to score. That was almost turnover number 18. Quick three there from Spear. There he hits it. 16 seconds and down to a one possession game. That shot had to go for the Rattlers. As Coach McCollum takes another timeout. Okay, take us through this late game execution now, Stan. Well, that was a big shot by the freshman Spear, who leads this team in three. A little dribble handoff. 
in rhythm, takes the shot. 16 seconds, a ton of time. A ton of time. If you're a basketball historian, and I know you are, you're harking back to the early, early 70s, a Carolina Duke game, 16 seconds ago, the heels were down by eight. Walter Davis throws up a shot at the buzzer. The game goes in overtime, and, you know, the heels won. Without and a three-point line, Without a three-point. And I, you know, I have always, from that moment on, remembering that, it's like, okay, you know, anything is possible. And that's a great use of timeouts. Well, the situation now is that you're down three as a possession. But I don't know how long you can wait if you're Florida A&M for a steal. I think, you, you know, you may – Play defense for about three seconds at best, and then then you've got to try to foul. Let me see who's on the court in a minute, and and then you you go from there, and you see what happens. I don't I don't think you waste a lot of time. If you foul immediately, so be it. The bottom line is that you've got to get the basket, and you've got to get a stop here. So who's on the floor for North Carolina Central? Palmer Maxwell. Caldwell is out there also. 56% free throw shooter. They had a foul, didn't get it. They do foul him. I don't think that FAMU was trying to foul there, judging by the reaction, but they do get the foul, and they send Palmer to the line. You mentioned his percentage a moment ago. And they fouled with 12.4, so that's about, yeah. May may have gotten the foul committed a little sooner. uh, You know, the clock stopped. He didn't waste a lot of time. So now you put the pressure on the shooter. And, and one thing, too, and, and Lavelle's going to pull him off the line. I was going to say, okay, if you miss that second one, you back tap. Don't go over anybody's back. Try to keep the possession going. Palmer comes in as a 57% free throw shooter, but he is four for four here on the night. 13 points, nine rebounds for him in 21 minutes. Makes the front end. That's huge. Now a two-possession game and a chance to extend it to five here. What I do if I'm North Carolina Central, if he makes this, I kind of show something, and I'm backing up, and I'm guarding the three-point line. Much better night for the Eagles from the free-throw line. A little bit 15 of, of 19 this evening. Spear long three, and he hits it. Two-point game. Palmer's fouled again. This one is not over yet. How right. about the threes that Spear has hit down I'm the stretch? Telling you, I'm telling you, this kid is, he's going to be something to handle as the years go on. But again, that was, you know, you, you put a little pressure on and make them work. They're going to take a shot. You got you to gotta guard the three line. That's a deep three. And he makes it. You got 7.3 to go. And here we go. Perkins can't believe it. He's yeah. had two threes I mean, he hit Perkins right in his did, face. Did what you need to do. Don't foul, but make, make it hard on him to make the shot. Two free throws now for Palmer, who again stays perfect from the line. This is the one that would make it two possessions. This is the big one. 7.3 to go, two possessions, very difficult. Fam has no timeouts left. An eight for eight night at the charity stripe for Palmer. Big job by Burr. Spear forced to give it up. The quick two, Kaiser fouls. Randolph with 2.5 to play. Maybe in a situation you try to make the first, miss the second intentionally. Don't foul. Don't foul. Well, yeah, but the thing of it is, is that, you know, we've seen how missing that second one is so difficult to do. And then you've got to miss it, get a back tap, and then be able to toe the line for a three. A lot of things have got to work for you. But this is not one of the things you wanted to do is foul this guy as he's driving. Let him go. Go after the basketball up high. Maybe get a goaltending because it's on the on the board, but don't touch him. 74-70. 2.5 seconds to go. NC Central looking for its first win of the season over FAMU. And its fifth win of the year overall. They're gonna take a full. They're gonna take a full. And, and you were talking about the tournament. And and there I think they will announce the pairings. Either late tonight or first thing tomorrow. I, 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 I think I read it and then I kind of you know went through and worried about basketball so much. But uh, 
Yeah, it's very interesting. They, this is the first year that they are uh, going into divisions. So the Northern Division, see Norfolk, Copy, Morgan, Howard. Howard didn't play, so really it's going to be a 17 format. Howard's not playing. Dale State's not eligible for the uh, for the uh, tournament, and then a and FAMU, Central, and South Carolina State. So it's really just going to be a, a dogfight up there in um, in Norfolk next week. And I, I think, uh, you know, North, North Carolina Central, Norfolk State, a and would have to be favorites. Coppin State's played well. The Turk brothers are shooting the ball well. So, uh, you know, it'll be very interesting. And, and this being a one-bid conference, so uh, that team's going to win it. And then you got to hope you can stay healthy and then, you know, get, go to the NCAAs. Go to Indianapolis. So any strategy here has to start with Randolph hitting the first free throw. Yes. Three for four on the night. Step one accomplished. Now what do you do here, Stan? Man. <laughs> Not a great position I, to be I, in, I, but I never because you're down three. So you gotta get it, you gotta get a pure miss and a pure back tap and a catch and a shot. I make it. I make it just to make it, and I can set my defense up. You don't know where this ball's going. We'll see. Looking for the miss, the yeah. rebound by Palmer, and NC Central is gonna win 74-71. So the Eagles, a trying year. Stan, they wrap things up in the regular season at least with a win at home. Perhaps take some momentum into Norfolk next week. Yeah, snapping that losing streak. They were the team that won the championship most recently, so they'll be excited about that, as will this very good Florida a and basketball team. And so I'm very impressed. I congratulate the student athletes and everyone for just persevering throughout the season. It's been a long year, but you're almost at the tournament time. Congratulations and good luck. Spear, Reeves, and Randolph with 14 for the Rattlers. Maxwell matches that total. Comes back after sustaining the injury in the first. The Eagles get the three-point win. For Stan Luter and the rest of our production crew, I'm Ryan Craig. Thanks for being with us on ESPN+.